Welcome back, Shalligators, and welcome back to our Grad Week series. In our last video, we talked about how to find yourself, how to figure out what you wanna do, but what if you know <laughs> and you're applying for jobs and you're like, I know that I would be good at something, but I don't really know how to interview. Look, I feel like there's a ton of things out there, like LinkedIn is just this like bottomless pit of interviewing tips. So I'm not gonna tell you like exactly what to wear because quite frankly, I have no idea. I'm not going to tell you what to put on your resume because again, I have literally no clue. I'm not even going to tell you anything about LinkedIn because quite frankly, I don't really know how it works and I hate it. I am gonna tell you why I hired people when I was working in corporate America, when I was running Star Magazine. And even before that, I've hired people. I'll tell you the one thing that got someone the job over someone who on paper might have been more qualified, but they didn't get it. We're gonna get into this one thing that's really gonna make such a difference. We're gonna get into it. But before we do, wanna remind you, if you wanna talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, click the link down below to head to my website and submit a question to me. I answer all of them. I can get back to you in as little as 24 hours. And if you want like a video shout out or something, if you need like a pep talk for yourself or a friend who just graduated, anything like that, and you live in the US, head to cameo.com and search me. Or if you're outside the US, if you're an international chickadee, go to memo, M-E-M-M-O dot me. You can order a video up right there. Also, Shalligators, come with me to Paris. We're going to Paris next April. It's gonna be so much fun. The trip is already half sold out. And as you watch this, I am currently on a Shalligator getaway to Costa Rica with my booze, with my Shalantourage crew. Head over to my Instagram, ShallonXO, to follow along and see what a Shalligator trip entails. Is it weird? Are we like wearing name tags all the time? No, it's honestly amazing. I, I know future me is having a great time right now. I'm having an amazing time. I'm just not right here. I'm simply self. I'm having an amazing time. Okay. Less amazing is interviewing. Oh God, the business casual, right? The polyester outfits that you put on, the sensible slacks. I hope I never have to go back into corporate America, knock on wood, because I just don't know that I have it in me. Like I, I don't know that I can go through interviewing processes again. It's like dating. It's like you go out on what you think is like, I don't know, like a fine first date. You're not even 100% sold on them, but they're rejecting you and you're like, really? <laughs> okay, what is the difference between an interview that isn't gonna go someplace and one that is gonna get you the job? Well, like I said, I can only tell you from my experience as a hiring manager. So I ran Star Magazine. It's a celebrity weekly kind of magazine. And the number one thing that got people the job was knowledge of the product. Knowledge of the product. Like, oh, know where you're interviewing? <laughs> yeah. Does that sound stupid? I think it is. I think it's stupid that someone would walk through my office door, waste my goddamn time, and not really know very much about our company. Now look, I understand you're probably going on a lot of interviews, you're applying a lot of places. Oh, so I'm just supposed to research every place I'm gonna apply? Yes. Yes, man. Where, I don't know, do you go out on nothing but blind dates where you have no idea what this guy looks like? You didn't stalk his Insta, you didn't look at his Tinder profile, you're just like, whatever. Then don't be surprised, you can't find anyone. You have no criteria. You don't know what you're walking into, you don't know how to tailor your own persona and your own pitch to who you're seeing. I mean, obviously, you come across as what? On a date? Desperate. I don't care who's gonna walk into this restaurant and sit across from me. I just hope it's a person. Desperation is the strongest smell in the world, right? We can all smell it just wafting off of other people in waves and it's repellent. And it's especially repellent like in the job industry. And look, I know what you're thinking. Well, I am coming across as desperate because I am <laughs> like, I get that, I get it, totally. Like you just wanna find your place in the world. You don't wanna like work in a dog grooming place anymore. You're like, someone just fucking hire me. But look, we talked in the last video, hopefully you saw it, that this cannot be your vibe. Desperation is not it because you will have that desperate vibe and take whoever comes along. Like we understand that this is not the way to date. You're like, I'm super desperate and I just want someone to love me. Anybody, he can be fat, short, homeless, bald, um, sex offender registry, I really don't care. First of all, who the hell wants to date that chick? And who wants to, who wants to be that chick? That sounds awful. 
jobs, same thing. Because I, I saw this over and over and over in New York. Like when I moved to New York, I knew I wanted to be a writer and I wanted to be a writer for magazines, a specific type of magazine, like either fashion or like, you know, self or allure or glamour, you know, in that female magazine niche, even male magazines. And I ended up, uh, you know, working for FHM and Maxim and stuff. And my friends, my roommates at the time, they also wanted to be in magazines. I mean, we all did. We all wanted to be Carrie Bradshaw, you know, and they did not have, I'll be blunt, the guts to be poor and to stick it out and to, to walk that path, to be an in her, to be an intern and then go to your waitressing job and climb the ranks and work seven days a week. They didn't have it in them. So they took ad sales jobs at magazines. So there's two completely different divisions of a magazine. There's the editorial, the people who write, the stylist, the all, you know, the fun shit. And then you have the ad sales side, the business side. And they talk to Viagra, like, do you want to run ads in Maxim? Okay, like how many, how much? They're basically salespeople. And these two sides never meet, never. They're not even in the same building. Sometimes they're not even in the same city. But my friends, because they couldn't be poor, were like, I don't care. Like their starting salary is like 60,000. Shallon, you're making like 24, loser. I'm gonna take this job and I'm gonna transition over to editorial at some point. It's almost impossible. That's almost impossible. It's like saying, I'm gonna work at the cafeteria in a hospital and I'm gonna transition to being a neurosurgeon. It's just, I'm just gonna do that. Not without the experience, you're not. No, you're not. It didn't happen for any of them. And as they began to realize that, and as their salary kind of plateaued and mine kept going up because I was on the path I wanted to be on, they did not know how to switch. They were too entrenched. It was kind of too late. They would have to start over at that 24,000. They would have to be a 28, 29 year old intern with 18 year olds. That doesn't sound appealing, okay? So it's really, really important we understand what we want to do and we face it with no fear and bravely knowing the path might be difficult, but it is our path. It's the authentic path because there's no path more difficult than the one you don't even want to fucking be on. You can be driving on the best highway in the world. If it is going in the opposite direction of where you're trying to go, what are you doing? What are you doing? So this is not what we can do. And I bring this back to the desperation because my friends were basically desperate. They couldn't stand to feel like they were losers, even though there's nothing losery about walking the path one step at a time, doing it the hard way to get to where you want to go. What's losery about that? Nothing. So they took the first good looking job that came along. These girls are still in ad sales and they hate it. They hate their jobs. And they've all had like four kids, I think, because their job doesn't fulfill them. So they're like, well, I have to like craft this really big family because that's what makes me happy. Like, great, have a bunch of kids if that's what you want, but also maybe have a job that like lights you up inside. And that's never, that's never going to be their life. Their whole life. It's just, it's never going to be that way. That is, that like hurts, man. That hurts. That is rough. So use your time wisely. Use your intention wisely and use your interviews even more wisely than that. So let's say you're like, okay, I'm not like your friend, Shallon. I know what I want to do. I'm interviewing the industry I want. Yeah, you do need to spend some time getting familiar with the product. Because I had so, so many people come into my office or even just in their cover letter. And they would, they would reference sections of the magazine that weren't our magazine. I have some really good ideas for stars. They're just like us. And I would say, that's great. Here's the address of Us Weekly because that's the magazine that section is actually in. We don't have that. Did you lay down a fiver and pick up a star magazine? Do you even know what this product is? Think about that in another industry. You go interviewing at a sushi restaurant and you're a grill master. I just really am excited to grill all this sushi. I'm like, what? Get the fuck out. It's clown behavior. It's clown behavior. But the people who got the job are the people who came in and they're like, I don't just want to work for a celebrity magazine. I want to work for star magazine. 
one of the best hires I ever hired. So I had this whole pool of girls who'd worked for like Pop Sugar and like, you know, those kind of sites, celebrity type sites. Like they knew at, they were in it. They were also a little whatever-ish about it. Or at least if they were enthusiastic, it didn't come across that way. They weren't like, I'm so fucking jazzed on this industry. I love it. I'm an enthusiastic bachelor watcher. I know everything about the Royals. I know this section of your magazine, this section. They, they were just like, yeah, so I've been doing this for like eight years. Yeah, cool. And experience is fantastic. You, Of course you want that. But then this other girl came in, Genevieve. <laughs> And she was a lawyer. She was a Harvard educated lawyer. I think her brother also went to Princeton. Crazy. What do they feed these kids? Genevieve Uzmari. She's the best. And she was like, I have no experience in this industry. I have experience with discipline. I have experience with analytics. I can tell you how well the website's doing. I can tell you what SEO terms are trending. I am extremely detail oriented. I'm a contract lawyer. I will not miss a period, a comma, nothing. And I love this shit. I love celebrities. I love Star Magazine. It's what I would read every day to decompress after a trial. It's what I would read during law school. I know this book backwards and forwards. I thought, hmm, she's smart. She's obviously a hard worker. She's analytical, which we've got enough creatives to sink a ship, all right? We're all creative out. She's going to tell us how to actually make this product better. And she knows the product. I can teach her the back-end systems, the graphic design, whatever. I can teach her those things. That'll take a day. I can't teach someone to be detail-oriented. I certainly can't teach them discipline. Nor can I teach them to organically care. I can't teach them to care. And look, yeah, we write about the Kardashians all day. We're not saving lives. We're not colonizing Venus, but you still got to care. I cared tremendously about that job. I cared about the product that I put out and you can laugh at it. What magazine have you run exactly? Oh, just checking. So she got the job and people were like, you hired a lawyer with no experience. I said, you're goddamn right. I did. Within a year, she was an editor of the site. She rose so fast because she, first of all, she wanted to prove herself. She was like, I'm not going to just be like, whatever, the bachelor, Kathy Randolph. She wasn't like that. She was so into this. She was excited and she was grateful to be there. Not desperate. I mean, she clearly had a job, but she demonstrated so much enthusiasm. What I want you to do when you walk through those doors, you don't have to pretend that like editing the sorority newsletter is like worthy of a job at Allure. It's probably not. You don't need to over inflate everything you did in the Greek system, the internships you had. Because honestly, when I've looked at um, resumes, I gave it about the attention I gave this bag of Fritos and their ingredients list. I looked at one thing on this, calories, 160. All right, fine, I can handle that. Am I looking at the actual ingredients? Oh, Frito-Lay in Plano, Texas. Oh, okay, okay, that's a total of fiber, one gram. Mmm, iron, 0.2 milligrams. How much is that a day? I don't know, let's see. I looked at the calories and that's it. That's it. People don't go through your resume with a fine tooth comb, like at all. They don't have time. They have, you realize they have a whole other job that they're usually doing, a whole other job. So what somebody wants, when you get in front of the manager who, who you would be working for, you need to make their struggles feel heard. Your job is to make their job easier. And I want you to say that, hey, I know I don't come in here with a ton of experience, but I do come in here with an understanding that I exist to make your life easier. And I want to know exactly the things that I can do to make that happen. So let me tell you what's going to go on. When I get the job here, I'm going to spend the first two weeks asking a ton of questions about this. Is this task done exactly right? And what about this? I'm going to be bombarding you with questions because after that, I want to to be able to be as autonomous as possible, to free up your day so that the tasks you assign me are off your mind and off your plate. You can know that unless I have like a big question about something, the task you give me, I'm gonna take to completion with a minimum of involvement from you. I would hire that person. I wouldn't give a shit what their qualification was. I want someone who's going to make my life easier. I have one friend and she 
she's in journalism too. And she was always like, I'm, you know, I want a mentor. I want a mentor. And finally I was like, you're not going to find a mentor. No one wants to mentor you. No one wants to mentor me or anybody. They're busy. You know what they want to do? They want to go home and they want to take off their uncomfortable polyester pants. And they want to lay on the couch and scroll on Instagram and stalk their ex and just relax. They don't want to mentor you. Nobody does. Just no. And that's the case. It's like, we want to go in. We want to do our job, we want to make our bag, and we want to get on with our lives. So how can you be that person to someone who's hiring you? And like I said, you also have to fuse that with enthusiasm. I know this product. I know exactly what Tesla is about. I know I know where Frito-Lay makes their chips. It's Plano, Texas, damn it. Ooh, let's go a little left in there. Oh yeah, fuck yeah. You want to go in there demonstrating those things. Because if you can do that, because look, 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 look. Everyone coming through that door has the same level of experience. Maybe one of them has an internship that's sort of relevant because their dad's golf buddy got it for him. Okay. But that person might not always be the smartest person to hire. Maybe they're going to be lazy. Maybe they're only really going to work there until something better comes along, until their dad gives them the company. So this is something else you say. I'm in it to win it. You know, a lot of people my age, we're told... We got to move like every two years, like, oh, move on every one year and all this experience. I don't want to do that. I want to put down roots here. I like this company. I don't just want a foot in a door. I want a foot in this door. Not even just this industry, this door. I want to work here. I want to see how far I can climb. I want to make this product the best thing I can. That doesn't have to be true. That doesn't have to be true. Fuck them. This is your, fuck them, man. Listen, listen. When I worked at Star... Um, someone died. This guy, he was just, he was just a ball of sunshine. He was, he had a seizure and he died one, one weekend. That Monday, someone else was at his desk. Your company doesn't give a fuck about you. They don't care if you live or die. Literally. They will work you to death if they can. They don't care. Your problems, you're like, means fucking nothing to them. HR, <laughs> HR is there, HR is like a traffic cone. HR is there to do one thing and one thing only, prevent lawsuits. That's it. They don't give a fuck if you're overworked. They don't give a fuck if your boss is mean. They give a fuck if you might sue, but only if you actually can sue. And believe me, sister, they know whether or not you can. I just feel like that needed to be said. I also don't want you to go in there with this, you know, of course, you don't want this beggar's mentality. Please, any job. Help me, I'm poor. But you definitely, definitely do not want to go in there with this bombastic attitude of, you're lucky to have me. No, they're not. No, they're not. Well, I'm young and I'm innovative. Are you? I mean, are you? Do you honestly have new, crazy, wild ideas? And if you do, here's the big question. Does the company care? I got news for you. The answer is almost always no. Companies do not want someone to come in and shake up everything. That was the number one awful thing that I saw when I was hiring people. In their cover letter, people would straight up neg Star Magazine. I mean, what is this section? This one girl, I, I called her. I said, I have never seen a more insulting cover letter in my entire life. Like, you will not be coming in for an interview. You, you will not be talking to anyone in this industry. She's like, this magazine is so stupid. The writing is so bad. I could make it better. I'm like, I write this magazine. I write it. That page you just referenced, I wrote that page. And actually, bitch, it's really fucking good. I'm a two-time published author. Sit the fuck down. You're a theta. Shut the fuck up. Do not come in with that attitude. And yeah, even... Her horrible ass attitude notwithstanding, I wish I could remember her name. I should have like written it down for like my burn book. Most everyone came in and they're like, I have to make all these changes and we're going to get rid of this and add this section. It's like, hey, hey, sweetie. Hey, just because I'm older than you doesn't mean that I'm old. Just because I have experience doesn't mean I have no more innovation in me. I have plenty. I know this product better than you. I know this industry. I know the trends. I know the data. I know all this. You don't know any of these things. Do not come in here. And tell me, either tacitly or overtly, that everything we do is stupid because you literally don't know what you're talking about. And it's insulting. Why would I want to work with someone who thinks everything we do is bullshit? 
And why would I even want to work with someone who's going to come in here and commit the cardinal sin of an employee, which is, do you remember what we said earlier? You're going to make my life harder. You're going to make my life harder. Yeah, I care about the product. I care about me a lot more. I want the, I want a good product. I want to make something I'm proud of, but I also want to go home and take my pants off. I want to go on a date with my boyfriend. I want to see my friends. Like if it's going to be, Hey, work an extra 20 hours a week, revamping this project with everything Cassidy has to say about it or not hiring her and having more of a work-life balance. Guess what, dude? Guess what? Innovation does not mean the complete destruction of everything that's currently going on. A job is still there because on some level it, it works. Does it work perfectly? No. But are you going to come in and reinvent the wheel? Also no especially if a job isn't working perfectly. I mean, think about it. Do you really think that no one in that company has been like, we should do things like the opposite? At Star, I was banging my head against the wall every fucking week pitching country music stories. Nobody cares about country music. I said nobody in New York City might care, but that's actually not true. Country music is the default setting for white Americans. And our audience is white Americans, okay? They don't really care about the royal family. They care about Miranda Lambert, who she's fucking now and cheating on Blake Shelton with. They care about these people. Couldn't, couldn't make any headway. And I was the editor. Like, the, and there's higher ups and there's people above me, right? So the fact that like someone's like, I'm 22 and I'm just gonna like rewrite it all. You're not. And if you tell yourself that, you're setting yourself up for disappointment. I'm not saying you're gonna come in and make no difference and no impact. But if you approach it from this huge standpoint of like, we're tearing everything down. We're starting from scratch. It's off-putting, it's insulting, and it's unrealistic. And this is why a lot of people end up leaving corporate America and working for themselves. The fact that I can talk about whatever I want on this channel is worth its weight in gold. It is. Even if I made less money, which I don't, <laughs> I mean, the fact of my autonomy, huh, whew, but I'm also a grown woman. Like I put my time into the trenches at work to gather that data, to see firsthand. You actually, it's really hard to move the needle. So go in with enthusiasm, but not this complete gut renovation attitude. And ask the hiring manager, what's your thought? Are you looking to shake things up or are you looking to keep things rolling along? Like I had never had an employee, uh, a hire interviewer, interviewee, sorry, we got there eventually, asked me that. And that would have been an amazing thing to hear because I would have said, "Real, I would love to shake things up. Realistically, workflow-wise, staffing-wise, we just don't have the manpower. So I'm with you. And I'd be like, wow, this person, like, they get it. Like, they, she might only be 22, 24. She, she gets it. Like, she understands already what it's like to be in this environment. She's not here yet, but like, I can mold her into my little like Pygmalion. I can like create a little carbon copy here. I'm a double word proud of her. And those are the people I ended up hiring. People who approached me from a what do you need standpoint, not what you gonna give me? Money, bitch. That's basically, that's all I need to give you is a paycheck. Okay, so I've done my work, you're getting paid. Now you gotta, you gotta give mama what she needs. And you better not make any problems for me. You better not make any waves. I fired a lot of people because I'm like, you're not doing what I told you to do. You're being combative and a contrarian. Even if I agree with you, even if I agree with the changes you're making, like maybe they haven't put in, been put into place for a reason. And maybe that reason is they actually don't work. And maybe the reason is, hey man, the powers that be are just vetoing them because they're old, dumb boomers and they're not dying off the rate they should because we keep like, quarantining people so no one gets COVID and dies, even though that generation can be on the fucking way out so that maybe some women can get some jobs. I don't mean your parents, obviously, like Dick Cheney, you know, did he already die? Let's do that. So enthusiasm, brand awareness, an attitude of service. What can I do for you? Because that service and slavishness, not the same thing. Service is I've got a skill set. That skill set might only be enthusiasm and brand knowledge because, hey, I'm just out of college. I don't fucking know. 
slavish attitude. Okay, yeah, $10,000 a year, fine. Oh, working eight days a week, yes, I will do that. You need a kidney, you can have it. That comes from the desperation. That's a fear-based, desperate standpoint. And you know the kind of people who wanna hire someone who's desperate? The toxic. What kind of man wants to date a desperate girl? A toxic one. One who's like, Ugh, she'll do anal on the first date. I can probably like tell her I fucked another girl. What's she going to do? Leave? No, she's desperate. We can acknowledge like, yo, that isn't whatever combo is fitting together. These are two bad things. This is not some, no. Same in work environment. Same in a work environment. You get a bad boss if you go in with that desperate attitude. You can avoid that attitude by doing that work. Like I said, and like we talked about in the previous video of what is my path? What is my path? Forget about how long it's gonna take. Time is immaterial when you're on the right path because every day you know you're a little closer. And when you're on the wrong path, every day doesn't really get you anywhere. You're running in circles and you're too good for that. We're gonna be back with more videos. Like I said, head over to my Instagram, ShallonXO, and follow along on my Costa Rica trip. And if you wanna come join me, head to the link right down in the bio and join me in Paris. I'll see you later, Shalligators.